All right, so now let's look at what actually qi is that connects with uh, internal martial art. Before that, I'm going to quickly just say that qi, as we said in the beginning, has many different uses and interpretations. The word qi is not a singular, it doesn't have a singular meaning, right? So a quick example of, of this, gu qi, refer to when a person has a strong principle, right? Someone you gu qi means that he is so abed to his own principle that he will never bend, no matter what kind of thread or, or, what, or whatever kind of bribe you can get. That's called your gu qi. Gu means bong. Gu qi, right? So the qi of bong. It actually doesn't refer to energy, it doesn't refer to air, it refers to the sort of idea that he's got a hard bone, right? And even that is kind of uh, vague, you know, it just means a person doesn't kneel e e easily. So that is gu qi, and you can see qi here means something completely different. And when somebody is righteous, you say, ah, ta yu zheng qi, right? Yi shen zheng qi means a person is righteous. And in this case, zheng is righteous, and qi is almost like a vibe, you know, or, or or something that is not physical. So you can see that when you try to define the exact meaning of qi, it becomes difficult because in different contexts, qi can mean a lot of different things. In fact, China, uh, Chinese people, the olden Chinese culture, they sort of use qi as a placeholder for a lot of things that they don't understand. Okay? Now, anything that they kind of don't understand, it is qi. But, um, so to understand qi, or at least, you know, in terms of internal martial art, we have to look at Qi was in the realm of internal martial art, which is basically the qi that flows inside our body. You might think, okay, but what about the qi that you breathe? Okay, um, so breathing is part of Chinese martial art in terms of qi, but internal martial art is not that heavy on controlling the breathing. Right? There are styles that exhale when they generate power, but they don't they, they don't control the breathing as obvious as external martial art like Honga and all these sudden styles do, right? So they don't go like inhale and then exhale. They don't, they don't have, have that. You, you almost never know when the internal martial art master inhales, it, it's hidden. It's only when they generate power with the exhale, but inhaling part is, is, is hidden. So, and they can also generate power without the, the heavy exhale. So inhale, inhaling isn't, isn't always connected to power generation. Okay, so it is partially involved, but not completely. So, uh, now next we're going to talk about internal qi. So what is this internal qi? Right? What is the thing that flows in our body? I mean, we can't see it, we can't, we can't measure it, but we can feel it, right? The people who, who does Tai Chi and, um, you know, or, or Qi Gong, they will say, you know, after doing it for a while, my hand feels warm, my, 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 my fingers are pulsating, my hand feels they're bigger, I think you can feel it, man. There is something in my body called qi. I have this energy. Um, but you know, why do people say you can't me measure it? Right? It's because that qi is not what you think it, it is. If you look at the Chinese medical discipline, right, they always refer to qi together with blood. Right? They call it qi xue. They almost never isolate qi when it comes to internal qi by itself. Right? When they say somebody's Qi is weak in terms of health, they say qi xue xu. And obviously, you know, if you go deeper, qi xue is like yin and yang, so it can be qi xu or xue xu or both. But qi xue is always together, right? They believe that qi travels before xue. So when the qi is weak, xue don't travel. Now, I'm not sure if there really is something that travels before xue. But what I can say is that basically, in the internal martial arts context, internal qi is pretty much blood flow. Okay. Okay, so if you think about it, when your hand feels warm, it's actually because blood are flowing through to your fingertips. Right? In winter where your hand is cold, it's actually because you know your blood flow is not good enough to go through. When they are, they will feel warm. Uh, the same goes for the pulsation and the, you know, like feeling like your hand is getting bigger. You know, they are getting a bit swollen. Those are all feelings of having more blood flow into your hand. Right? The sensation of feeling something flowing through the body, that's the blood that is actually, you know, that you are feeling. It, is, it can be qi, but, qi but, but the feeling you get is a result of blood. Right? When I say it can be qi, I mean that it could be a, you know, a concept of qi. 
but qi is not the physical thing that happens in the body. What you physically are feeling is the flow of blood. So qi can be argued as the cause, but the result is blood flow. So if your blood is not flowing properly, then in Chinese martial arts or in Chinese medical, they refer to it as qi having problem. And from this you can see that qi isn't a mystical energy or, or you know, like the force. Right? It's pretty much something that everybody has. It's a biological observation. It's a, it's a biological thing that everyone has in their body. And now, you know, another example would be when someone say, uh, tada, you know, when someone says that their face looks good, like you know, like it has they say when someone looks healthy, they say qi se bu cuo. Qi again is qi. Se means color. So when they say qi, so they're referring to the color of your face. It's not pale, right? It's got reddish underneath the skin, which is pretty much because of the blood flow. When someone is very pale because they're either sick or, 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 or nauseous or any other un unhealthy reason, they say, oh, his qi se bu hao. So you can see that, you know, when it comes to health and physical body related, Qi actually means a quality of blood, right? When the blood flowing through your, your body properly, you, your face will have this red undertone. When you are not feeling well, it becomes pale, you know, you nausea, or if you dizzy having a headache, your face get pale because the blood are not going flowing through properly. But same as in the Chinese medical health perspective, when they say when your circulation is bad, it's all you know, qi xue bu tong means that you know your qi and blood is not circulating properly so you know and sometimes they will tell you you, know, you got to do some exercise to to improve your, your qi what it actually means is you're just doing some exercise to improve your blood flow right if your blood flows through your body properly in theory you shouldn't have any issues I mean obviously you might still get sick from virus and infection all of that but you wouldn't have fundamental functional problems like you know you wouldn't have problem with your knees if the blood constantly flows through it and you exercise often it will become a problem when you know when the blood is somehow blocked and it's not flowing through as much and then you do heavy exercises on the knee joint the joint doesn't have enough protection or, or lubricant so to speak uh, or you know if, or if the blood doesn't flow through your liver when your liver have a problem they now call it you know fat liver pretty much is when the fat kind of blocks the flow of blood so all of these things in Chinese medical, they, they see it as the problem of, of qi and blood. So you, know, you can see how this whole thing is actually one. Qi is not something individual, it is together with blood. And if you look from the beginning example, we have qi, that's the air, we inhale qi into our, our body through breathing. So how does that then connect to the internal flow of, of blood? Well, it's quite simple because when you breathe in, oxygen, get pumped into your blood and go through your heart and your heart pump it to the rest of your body. So in a sense, you know, this qi is sort of linked from qi as in air that we breathe to the breathing itself to how it's converted into blood that, that sustains our body. So, there are, so you kind of can see that they are pretty much linked and therefore in Chinese culture it's all referred to as qi. But obviously in each stage, qi functions she is slightly different, right? Air to breathing itself to eventually convert to, to, to blood flow. They're not exactly the same, but you can see why Chinese culture believe it's the same thing because they're sort of linked in that sense. So now you might wonder, okay, then if qi is blood, then how does that actually help with martial arts? Because okay, so first of all, I want you to imagine if you were sitting on your hand until your hand goes numb, right? That means the blood is no longer flowing into your, your arm or your hand. Your, your arm and hand loses function, okay? So, what this tells you is that um, qi or blood, circulation of blood gives you more control over your body, right? When, when the blood is not flowing properly, they become numb. And when you're numb, obviously, you can't do much. So, so qi or blood is actually a prerequisite of healthy condition, right? If you're healthy, you wouldn't have that problem. So, and therefore, you can you know, apply the application or the structure or the fundamental skeletal forces in a fight. But if your qi or blood flow is not healthy or is not good, even if you have these fundamental principles and these training, 
your performance in the fight is going to be much worse because you know if your blood flow can sustain your motion you don't have as much control over your body I mean if you're healthy obviously you don't really you can't really understand this but I have you know met people who have serious health issues the hand and the hand and feet are always cold and when they do something for you know maybe 30 seconds they start to get numbness in their arms and obviously you know when you're like that you can't fight so the first thing we're going to, talk, we're going to basically try to understand is that when internal martial arts talk about yang qi xu, right, try to to cultivate the energy, they're referring to just being into a healthier state so that your qi flow is proper and therefore it doesn't hinder your ability to do motion, to generate power and to fight. So it doesn't necessarily mean that someone who trains internal martial arts have better qi, which becomes a mystical power or, or another ability that you know is superior to external people or modern combat sport it's not like that okay it just means that they see this as an important element of their training but well, in modern combat sport even though they don't talk about chi or blood they still need to, to rely on it right if they if a, if a person doing modern combat sport have health issues like heart problems and their blood circulation is not good they also can't pre perform well right they're also going to run into problem when they're throwing punches they're going to not be able to sustain, they're going to lose stamina, they're going to lose body control. You know, if their arm goes numb, they also can't throw a punch. So this qi, although it's a concept that only taught in Chinese martial art, the, the, the function it serves is everywhere. Okay, so doing Chinese martial art doesn't make you special or you know, have something, as, as far as qi is concerned, that doesn't give you an edge over other martial art. It's just that in other martial arts, they just simply refer to this as a healthy condition. If the body is healthy and you do, you know, boxing, MMA, you can achieve good results. If you're unhealthy, you do that. You know, some people, sometimes you, you get healthier and you can achieve the desired result. But if you're really, really unhealthy, you can't do anything. No matter if it's combat sport or Chinese martial arts, you can't do them. Okay, so qi is something special. It is a prerequisite, the blood flow, right? It's a prerequisite on how to, on allowing your body to function at the base it can. Another thing that if you were to sit on your hand and stop the, the, the blood flow and then you try to hit something, you'll find that you're more likely to get injured. Okay, um, so that's because basically uh, we would, in Chinese martial arts we believe that the blood or qi sort of forms like a cushion, right? Around your bone. So obviously we have flesh, we have, we have bone, we have tendon, we have flesh, but qi or blood sort of like kind of a liquid that falls out of the tube and therefore when your blood flow in your hand are good you are less likely to get injured when you hit someone because there's more cushion between the contact and your bone you're, you're, you're less likely to injure your, your bones whereas if your if you if your blood flow is not maximized then there's a higher chance of you being injured which is why when you when you, when you put your mind to exercise or, or you know when you're doing sport it's very sudden that you get injured, but often when you are tired, in, Ch in Chinese culture, that's basically when you are tired or when out of fatigue, then your, your, your qi flow is not as good. Or when you're absent-minded, you're not thinking about it, and you, you, know, you play basketball or you play soccer, or you just walk and your arm hits something, it's, it's much easier to get injuries. Because, you know, obviously in modern context, you say it's because, you know, you, 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 your body mechanics is wrong, all of that, but in the Chinese all in their culture, they will say that it's because your qi xue is not, doesn't reach the point that, the part of the body that you are trying to, to use. Right? I know someone who didn't think about it, he just, you know, he just kind of dropped his hand at the table and he broke his um, hand bone. Now obviously, it could just be a freak accident, it could just be bad luck, but the point is, if you are mindful of, of hitting a table, there's less likely chances of you eat, of you breaking a bone. Obviously, there's another layer to this that you know when you're mindful of hitting something hard, you kind of hold holds back, right? Your body because you know something's hard, you don't go maximum. You're not thinking, you tend to, to hit harder. That's one element. The other element is that um, when you put your mind to it, your your hands are slightly more protected. I don't know how much degree it, it is, but it is an important aspect in Chinese martial art, right? We want to feel the, the feeling of qi, right? that pulsation that fills up your, your hand 
So which is why doing stance training, you have your E projected and you hold it or whatever it is and you feel that pulsation and then you do exercise and you do punches or, or you spar and you'll find that you know you have a better efficiency or you can you know perform better when you're warmed up, right? When, when your chi and blood is flowing through. Now this is true for internal martial art as well as for anything else. Even in modern combat sport, right? You can't call up a, a you know a modern combat sport practitioner out of the cold, you know, and just tell him to throw punches. He can, but it will be much weaker than if he warms up a bit, right? If he and this whole thing about warming up, in a sense, is pretty much getting your blood to flow through more than it usually does when you are, are, are dormant. So in Chinese martial arts, it's the same thing, okay? Except that the warming up is when you're doing stance practice and doing slow motion. You, you, you slowly pump the blood or chi to the end of your fingertips and through your whole body, and then you are ready to perform those, those, those actions. Whereas, you know, in modern sports, you do warm up by doing other minor exercises. You know, I mean, uh, for those in body, also do punches slowly first to kind of get the floor thing before they throw heavy punches. You know, they don't really think about it, but it's actually the same thing as how Chinese martial arts talking about cultivating qi flow before you generate power. Okay, so you can see that there's nothing mystical about qi. Qi is more like a house requirement, or it's more like a few that is fed to the engine, right? The engine of internal martial art are the four core forces, the skeletal forces, the structure, the mechanic, right? That is the core, the engine, and qi is the fuel. So you can have the skeletal structure down, you can you know, feel the mechanics, but if your blood flow is bad, you, 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 know, you, you don't feel healthy, then your performance, your ability to generate power is gonna be much, much worse than someone who's healthy and have, you know, good or great blood flow. But just having good blood flow doesn't mean a thing. Which is why people who does qigong and cultivate energy and they think that oh, I feel my whole body is full of energy, they still can't fight to save their own life. Okay, it's because that itself cannot fight. It's not even a power. It's simply just a health condition that makes your power better. Okay? So I would say stop blindly believing in the power of Chi or the force, like in Star Wars, okay? And focus on the actual tangible quality, which are the four fundamental forces of internal martial art. Also the training of E, okay? Uh, which we already talked about in the previous episode. So also, now we say established that, you know, Chi is just a measurement of the healthy body condition that even external styles and combat sport also make use of without realizing it. There is one more unique attribute of qi or blood flow that you can find in internal training, right? So now you might wonder if qi or you know it's just blood flow and you can get it by just you know doing punches, doing other you know external martial art draws, etc. etc., then why do internal martial art place a special emphasis on qi? And why don't they just do punches or why they do stance training, you know, and these slow exercises? Now, first of all, stance training as well as slow exercises, the main purpose is to get structure, to get a feeling of your skeletal bone to correct your posture and be able to maintain that. So that is the first and foremost reason. Again, building up the blood flow here is a byproduct. Okay, however, it is something else. Through doing stunts for a long time or doing certain exercises repeatedly for a long time, you are conditioning your body to improve the qi flow in that, in that way. Okay? Um, so by projecting your intention constantly to the fingertips, for example, you're constantly pushing your, or guiding your blood flow into your hand. Right? For example, when you're you know, holding your, your stances, etc., and through doing this for a long time, eventually your body will form a habit of, you know, of circulating blood to the fingertips and into the hand and all of that to a point where the moment your mind reaches the fingertip, a sufficient amount of blood already flows through it. You don't, you don't need to warm up. This is important because Chinese martial art is not a combat sport. It's not a ring sport. Again, I'm saying this not to, you know, to look down on combat sport, it just is for a different purpose. So when you are self-defending, when you are on the street, there's no time to warm up. 
you know, you might be working, working, and your mind is, you know, somewhere else, and someone might attack you. At that moment, your body needs to perform. And, you know, we all know most of the time, normal people, you know, normal people who train, they'll perform much worse than if they warm up. So by holding structure for a very long period of time, or doing a singular exercise for a long period of time, you actually for and by long I mean you know two hours per session, if you like you know two or three sessions, like six, four, six hours a day, that's almost you know a course of the entire day, you are forming this habit. Eventually you reach a point where it will not be a hundred percent, but there may be fifty to seventy percent of blood flow that always remain in your hand or wherever you want in your body. So that at any given moment when you're not warmed up, you're able to do a punch, do a strike, and do something and achieve far better result than someone who has to warm up. So this is the one part of internal martial training that should be slightly different to external or combat sport and, and other martial arts. Is that they want to you know, extend this kind of zone, right? this kind of condition in their body, this overwhelming blood flow. They want to be able to extend this through their everyday life. So they're always not 100%, but at least you know, 50 to 70% more than untrained people. In doing so, they are always ready to throw a strike or to handle a situation without having to warm up. The moment they see a stream, the moment they eat, the intent reaches the, the body, the whole body, the blood will already be there. And they're able to generate that power. Rather than you know, be caught completely off guard, and throw you know crooked punches or not not supported joints etc etc. So that is the one more unique quality of qi or blood training in Chinese martial art. Other than that, everything else is pretty much the same, right? So the method of training is different, but the actual thing that in our bodies that get used to improve our motion is the same as everyone else. There's nothing mystical or special about it. Now, for example, in Tai Chi, it is said in the Tai Chi classic, it is said clearly that the focus is not on Qi. If the focus is on Qi, you will hinder your flow. Okay, the focus has to be on Yi. What this means is that Yi is the thing that you actually control and are mindful. Qi is a byproduct. When your Yi reaches the fingertip, then Qi naturally follows. You don't channel your chi to the finger. No, you only put your intention there. You put your intention up, you put your intention back, down, forward, sideways, and then you let chi flow in the gap in between. You don't even want to control chi or breathing, right? Everything happens naturally, you control yi. Same with um, yi quan, right? They also don't train breathing or qi gong exercise. They simply hold the yi in the correct intention and then they feel a flow that, 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 you know, that falls up to the body. They call it the qi xue gu dang. Okay. And in Tongbei as well, although we talk about Wuxing Tongbei, we do talk about having qi reach the fingertip, but again, it is not a channeling. It's not something that we go... And then it goes, and no, it's, it's when you put your, your, your yi to your fingertip, then the qi needs to, to, to reach there. Obviously, in the beginning, that's hard. So you have to do exercise and training. Eventually, to a point where the moment your yi go to the finger, qi or blood go to it, and your arm and your hand naturally swells up with blood, and you'll be able to do these powers. So even though we do say that qi affects the ability to generate power, but if you look at it scientifically, what actually happens is, you know, in Tongbei, for example, we're talking about relaxed thinking force. I mean, there are four forces, but we're just going to isolate relaxed thinking force. We're going to do some shui zhao. Relaxed thinking force, if you are really relaxed, and not wobbly, but like, you know, relaxed in a correct way, then naturally qi will f or blood will flow through. If your arms are tense, you're cutting off the blood flow, and after a while, your arm will get numb. But if you relax properly, the energy flows through. So as you're training this, <coughs> You start to feel the pulsation into your, your, your fingers, and you say, ah, oh, you know, qi is getting stronger, and I'm hitting stronger. So you can sing, you can say that, okay, so qi is helping me to hit harder. But in actual fact, what's helping you to hit harder is the ability of relaxed thinking force, or the concept of relaxed thinking force. Qi here is a byproduct, is a result 
of relaxing human force. I'm not training qi to hit harder. I'm using the quality of relaxing human force to hit harder. Qi just happens to flow, blood happens to flow better when you are relaxed and thinking. Okay, so you can see that qi is always a byproduct. It's never the main driven thing. Same with you know mid pipe, right? Um, you know when you do this for like a couple thousand times, uh, uh, at least you know five hundred to a thousand times, without stopping, eventually you will feel your hand will be sore up with, with with blood because you're constantly you know jabbing or pushing it into the end of blood, it's constantly pushing through, pushing through. In the end, you will feel that your hand is getting much bigger. So to the you know to the people who are not thinking about it scientifically, they will naturally think you know my cheek is getting stronger. You know my cheek is hitting people. But actually, just blood flow, right? It's a mechanic that had to be right. This is just a byproduct. So, bottom line is, qi as an internal flow of energy does exist, but it is not a special energy. It's simply blood flow. A person who is healthy would simply have good qi flow. They don't have to specifically train to have better qi or, or cultivate. A person who are weaker or unhealthy can cultivate you know, exercise to become better or improve their blood flow and therefore become healthier. But ha having this qi or blood flow does not make you a better fighter. It does not make you a better martial artist. You still need the martial arts side of martial arts to become a martial artist, so to speak. Okay, so don't blindly believe in the mythical power of qi. Qi in itself or blood in itself can do nothing. It has to be put on top of the engine or the skeletal frame or the mechanic. It makes the mechanic better. But without that, qi or blood is absolutely nothing. It, it is worthless. Okay? And even and people who does modern combat sport, even without the understanding of qi, they are still actually making use of blood and that's what uh, you know separate between a, a, a good practitioner and a bad one. And bad, I don't mean by trend badly, but you know, someone who has lesser health condition. So that's sort of what you're looking at when you're talking about the kind of difference that qi can make. It's not a mystical power, it's just simply measurement of how healthy you are. Now typically, I'm always very, uh, I'm always skeptical whenever someone tries to teach qigong because I've explained how qigong is not really martial art. But obviously I also do understand that um, there are some masters, not a lot, but there are some who have genuine knowledge and authentic ability, but they are forced to teach Qigong in the West because that's what Western people expect, right? If you don't teach this, you run out of business. So there are people like that. But in general, I would say 9 out of 10 people who teach Qigong are frauds. Okay, I know this might upset a lot of people, but I don't really care because this is the truth. Right? This channel is all about exposing the real truth behind Chinese martial art. So, very rarely there might be someone who has real understanding, but he's forced to call it Qigong because that's what people want. But majority of the time when someone teaches Qigong, I would say stay away from them because they don't know what the hell they are, they are doing. And even with internal martial art, this is becoming a bit more difficult. But, you know, Internal master who, who teaches you to cultivate qi can also be problematic because uh, it might lead you down into the, to the wrong hole, right? You might be chasing something that actually is not important. What you should be focusing on is the body mechanics, the skeletal forces, the four fundamental mechanics. Those are the things you need to focus on, not qi. Qi is a byproduct. It's a, something that comes with you if you do train correctly and stay healthy. It's not something that you chase individually seeking to become better at. Okay, so I know that some of the older masters, even modern day masters, they still talk about qi and like cultivate qi. But in my experience, every single one of them that I've met that talk about these things, they're not good. They don't have the real authentic skill. Right? The masters that I met that are real, like my Yichuan teacher, my Taiji master now, and my Wu Xing Tongbei master, they do talk about qi, but they don't train qi. Right? They train mechanic. They, they train nei gong, internal training. Or to the stance training or certain exercises, they talk about the intent, power, um, mechanic, shen, which we'll cover in a later episode. But they don't actually talk about, you know, I'm going to channel my qi and, and do that, I'm going to channel my qi and do that. But that is a very dangerous thing 
or zone to be in, right? Because nine out of ten, if you're around people like that, you're wasting your, your time. You're not actually gaining real internal martial art abilities. Okay, I hope this video has made sense to you. If you've got any questions or suggestions, welcome to leave a comment below and I'll definitely get back to you when I have the chance. And if you find my channel helpful, please uh, you know, support me on Patreon if you can. It will help me greatly. And um, you know, so this is quite a controversial topic. So I hope um, it's making sense and you're, you're understanding what I'm trying to say. And hopefully this corona thing will die out soon so I can start making regular videos again. And for those of you out there, you know, stay safe and you know, try to not go into crowded areas and hope you know, everyone is safe and healthy. Thanks for watching. Press the martial channel and I'll see you next time.